my name's Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com, and today we're looking at the ATI Radeon HD 5670 512 megabyte graphics card. Taking a look at the top of the graphics card, we can see that it's actually quite a small card from the front to the back. We can also see that the heatsink on it is quite low profile as well. And it's also got a very small fan, but we'll talk about the cooling in a little bit more detail further on in the review. Because this is a reference card, there's no fancy graphics or anything like that, and it is just a pure plastic um, heatsink and the fan has just got the ATI Radeon Premium Graphics logo on it. Other than that, it's pretty much standard. Now taking a look at the underside of the graphics card, we can see that there's a couple of stickers on here which are purely just serial numbers for any RMA issues that you may have, technical support, that kind of thing. We can see that the PCB is made out of sort of a, a dark brown colour and we can see various different bolts on the graphics card which obviously are for holding the heatsink on from this side. We've also got this X plate here which underneath on the other side will of course be the GPU. This is also clamped on using screws. At the beginning of the review we spoke about the heatsink uh, in very brief detail. Um, just to sort of go through things again, it is made out of a black plastic and just having a look around the heatsink we can see that it's an enclosed uh, heatsink cover. Um, so when you actually look at it we can see that there are four ports here which are going to help dissipate the heat out towards the back of the card and hopefully sort of out towards the back of your case. We can also see that it's got this very small red fan which has got quite a few fins on it. All of this is going to suck in some air and push it straight back out of this side of the card. You can also see that the heatsink extends up here for extra cooling properties across the memory and this is where the fan connects in to the graphics card's power. Full specifications of the ATI Radeon 5670 include a core clock speed of 775 MHz, has 400 stream processing units, uses the latest DirectX 11 technology with Shader Model 5.0 and OpenGL 3.2 support, and this particular card comes with 512 MB of GDDR5 memory running at a speed of 1 GHz. It also has a 128-bit memory interface. This graphics card uses a PCI Express 2.1 16x interface. So far, you're probably thinking, what's so special about this graphics card? It just looks like a redesigned 5750. The power and the actual full specifications are roughly the same. So, what's so special? Well, there is one feature which is very special. Normally, on the 5750, 5770, and the rest of the 5 Series graphics cards, you'd have a Power Express power adapter up in this corner. But as you can see, there is nothing on this card, because purely it doesn't need one. The power that it actually gets from the PCI Express slot is more than sufficient. This graphics card is actually said to be running at around 51 watts at load, which is absolutely fantastic and makes sure that it doesn't require the need for any extra power. So we spoke about the specifications on the card and the upside, the fact that it hardly uses any power. There must be a downside. There is. This card hasn't got any ability, as you can see in this top right hand corner, where you'd normally see uh, a crossfire adapter. Sadly this card hasn't got that functionality but to be honest this card is aimed at the HTPC user and general light users, someone who wants to have a little bit of a uh, dabble in the latest DirectX 11 games like Battleforge, Dirt 2, it's going to give them the facility to do that uh, but it won't give you the facility to add another card and have it in a crossfire configuration. If you was going down that route then you would be looking at some of the higher spec cards like the 5750 and 5770 and onwards uh, but otherwise, this card is going to be perfect for general light gaming and HTPC users. We already spoke about this card's main key features, the fact that it's got good ventilation, produces little to no heat, and the fact that it's low profile. You can see straight away that it's low profile, the fact that the heatsink is very small, but the fact that it only takes up one slot in the back of your case. Normally you'd expect a card with two slots having four connections, this one has only got three connections, and normally that second PCI slot that it takes up in your case would be filled with ventilation holes, but because this card doesn't produce that much heat, there is no need for it. Taking a look at the connections on the back of the card, we can see that it's got a DVI slot, HDMI slot, and a DisplayPort slot. There's no VGA port on here, but if you have got an old style monitor that uses a VGA input, then it's just a matter of getting a dongle, which most cards should come with. This will convert the DVI to VGA. Because this graphics card is part of the Radeon 5000 series, it's got some of the latest technologies. Firstly, being DirectX 11. Two of the most popular titles out at the moment are Battleforge from Electronic Arts and Dirt 2. Battleforge was originally a DirectX 10 game, 
but it had a rejuvenation when DirectX 11 came onto the scene. There are more titles scheduled to come out this year, including some new titles and some older titles having a rejuvenation, just like Battleforge. This also has ATI Affinity, which is for multi-display configurations. ATI believe that by having, instead of having a 28 inch monitor, you'd be better off buying uh, multiple smaller monitors because it will mince you more into the actual game and you will have better overall gameplay. This card also has ATI Stream technology. This basically takes the load off of the CPU and balances it out between the CPU and the GPU. A lot of people can't afford an expensive processor as well as an expensive graphics card, so by using ATI Stream technology, it will balance it out and give you an overall better feel when you're playing the game, a more fluid gameplay. Having a quick look around on the internet trying to find a price for this graphics card, we did manage to find a price of £65.99 from Overclockers UK, but that was for the Sapphire version. You've got to remember this card is a reference card, so if you are able to find it online, you will find that vendors actually brand it as their own card. For instance, we found it for £70.25 from CCL Online, and they've branded it as a CCL Choice Radeon HD5670. So just beware when you do buy it and look at manufacturers and the various different warranties that they give you. first heard about the HD5670, it was directly from ATI. I went onto a conference call and the main thing that they told me is that it's a sub $100 graphics card. That equates to around £65-70, which is the prices that we gave you earlier. For this you get fantastic performance, a 775MHz um, core clock. You also get 512MB of uh, memory running at 4000MHz and the fact that you get DirectX 11 technology. We spoke about some of the titles that are already out. Check them out because you will be completely impressed with the results you actually get from it. The fact that it's also got ATI stream technology to give you a balance between the GPU and CPU and the ATI Affinity support. Anyone who buys this, whether you're a HTPC user or just a light gamer, you're going to be completely pleased with this graphics card and I definitely think it's well worth the money. That's why I'm giving it 5 out of 5 stars.